What is up guys? Welcome back to another GeekerWatt video and in today's video we're going to be building the ultimate bang for your buck gaming PC build for 2021 and beyond. I'm going to run you through all of the parts that we chose and why including AMD's brand new RX 6700 XT. We're going to put this awesome gaming PC build together and then we're going to boot it up to see just how good it performs in a massive range of the most popular titles. So without any further ado, let's dive straight into it after a quick word from today's video sponsor. This video has been made possible by Voidu, one of the best places on the web to get official game keys at great value prices from an official reseller that you guys can trust. With prices up to half of that you'll find on Steam, you can be sure you're going to get a fantastic deal. They've got in touch with the channel uh, to partner up and give you guys some awesome deals. Not only can my European, US, UK and Canadian viewers get 10% off the whole store using code GeekerWatt10, on your screen now, but worldwide viewers can actually get five euros or five dollars of cash back on their first purchase. That's right, Voidu are going to give you guys five euros or five pounds for simply using code GeekerWatt10 at checkout at the link below on your first purchase. With very competitive pricing, official keys and instant delivery, they've got you covered whether you're a PC or a console gamer. Exclusive bundles, exclusive promotions and a cashback discount code, oh yeah. Check out Voidu at the first link in the description below and pinned comment. Back to the build. Let's kick things off as always with our processor choice. And for this build, we've gone Team Red. We've gone Team AMD. We've gone Team Ryzen. Now, we haven't just done that because the graphics cards from AMD. We've done it because AMD make the best value gaming chips on the market right now. This 3600X is a great option. They have recently released the new 5600X, which is around $100 more expensive. It is a better CPU, but it costs quite a bit more money. And we think this chip is the sweet spot as far as price to performance performance goes. We're going to be installing our CPU into a B550 motherboard from MSI. Technically you could go for a B450 motherboard, that would work absolutely no problem. But the B550 chipset is I think a much better choice as it gives you widespread support for AMD 5000 series, you get a bit more overclocking leverage and all in all more features for your money. Crucially it has an AM4 socket as well so supports not only our Ryzen CPU but all the way up to a Ryzen 9 5950X. While you could upgrade this build theoretically to a Ryzen 9, I definitely wouldn't do on this cooler, but for our configuration, it's going to work great. This is the included AMD stock cooler, and it's a great innovation from AMD. Where Intel have basically ditched the stock cooler altogether, AMD have actually gone ahead and done quite the opposite, and give you a much better cooler in the box. It's not going to be as quiet as something like Cooler Master's own Hyper 212 Evo, but it is basically free, and is going to give you that bit extra price to performance that we're after in today's build. After after all, the more money we're able to save on something like a cooler, the more we've got for our graphics card, which is really important in 2021. Now with the CPU installed, it brings us nicely onto our RAM choice today, our memory. The thing in our computer that stops it forgetting things. I don't know where I'm going with that. There's a few key things you want to consider with a Ryzen CPU. The first is you want to make sure you've got at least two RAM DIMMs. That's because Ryzen loves the extra bandwidth of a dual channel kit. You also want to make sure you go 3600 megahertz or higher as fast memory really gives you that gaming edge when it comes to AMD CPUs. With our RAM covering off all of our kind of temporary memory tasks, we need some long-term storage in our build today. And that's where the M.2 SSD choice for this system comes in. If you really wanted to save as much money as is humanly possible, you could go for a slow SATA drive, but I personally think that's a poor choice in 2021. NVMe drives like this Seagate Barracuda 510 have become so affordable nowadays, and this thing is pretty rapid. We'll put some speed tests on your screen now so you can see kind of approx read and write speeds, but this is in the region of gigabytes rather than megabytes per second, which makes a huge difference. While this drive probably isn't going to run overly hot, the included heatsink that comes with the motherboard is a welcome addition. And we can screw this back down with our TD tiny little screwdriver, which we love here on the GeekerWatt channel. Here we go. And with that, believe it or not, half of our build on this tiny little square is now complete. Our motherboard assembly, as we call it, is ready to move over into the case. But James, what case have you selected? What case should we go for when we're trying to get maximum value, but also make sure we have something that doesn't look, you know, completely crap. And that is where this comes in. This is the Aero Cool Trinity Mesh. It's a really compact case with basically, as the name suggests, a mesh panel at the front. And 
now I think some really nice aesthetics. Has it got great water cooling support? No, it does not. Does it have a load of drive cages and premium features? No, it does not. Does it have reusable PCI? No, it does not. But it's got loads of RGB, it's got loads of airflow, a tempered glass side panel. This genuinely is gonna be one of the best value cases you'll ever find. Uh, they famously make a case called the Cylon, which is one of the best rated cases on Amazon, one of the highest sold, I believe, in the budget category. But the airflow on that one isn't particularly good. So this is a radical improvement in my book. And I'd absolutely recommend you go and look at this case over some of the other budget options on the market. And yes, this is a real tempered glass side panel. One of the best things about this case is actually its form factor. You can see it swallows up our motherboard, but only just, and that's part of the reason it's quite so compact. The compact and simple nature of this case is actually one of its best features. It's what helps to keep it quite efficient, quite good value in the grand scheme of the case market in general. And with it being a smaller system on the whole, it should be a bit easier as well for the first time builder, which is always a bonus. I'm going to come on to the graphics card in a moment's time, but first, First, we need to give our system power. We need to make sure the motherboard and the CPU and any extra fan or RGB hubs is all powered up and ready to go. And that's where this comes in. This is a 600 watt 80 plus bronze certified unit from Aerocool. It isn't modular, unfortunately, which means you just get all the cables you could possibly need already plugged in, which does limit customization and will make cable management a bit more difficult. But it is very, very affordable. The cables are nice sleeved black cables rather than like a horrible kind of rainbow colored affair, which just isn't gonna match the aesthetic of the build today. This video isn't going to be a full cables and wiring guide, but if you'd like to see us make a video like that, make sure to get subscribed down there, turn those notifications on, that's the most important bit. But the motherboard cable is just gonna plug in first, followed closely by the CPU power connector, which goes to the top left of the motherboard, a little something like this. And there we have it. We're gonna proceed and do some of our front panel cables a little bit later, but for now, I'm far too excited to get our graphics card installed. It is, of course, the one and only, the brand new AMD RX 6700 XT. Now, I've been impressed by AMD's GPU endeavors so far. I think the 6800 non-XT is actually one of the most impressive cards out at the moment. There is obviously a lot of controversy over the fact that AMD GPUs are even more out of stock than Nvidia ones, and really for no apparent reason other than AMD just can't make enough of them. Uh, this 6700 XT might be a different story. I'm hearing system integrators in the UK, especially like AlphaSync, have got basically 6700 XT systems ready to go. So hopefully that will translate soon enough into retail stock, but latest pricing and availability will be in the description below. Now this card is of course based on AMD's latest RDNA 2 architecture, the same as the 6800 XT, uh, the 6900 XT, and the 6000 series of cards, essentially. There are of course a few areas where AMD do simply still lag behind. The lack of equivalent DLSS support, at least at Nvidia's level as of yet, is a bit disappointing, and is most definitely an area that AMD kind of struggled to compete. You do get support though for ray tracing in some titles like Watch Dogs Legions. The ray tracing isn't as good as what you'll find on Nvidia cards, at least not yet. The performance impact that we've found between Nvidia ray tracing and AMD ray tracing is pretty colossal. But this is a huge first step. And if you don't care about ray tracing, then this card is straight up, it's phenomenal. We'll be testing out exact numbers a little bit later, uh, but all in all, I think this thing looks great so far. This MSI card has a nice plastic cooler here with two fans, not three, so it's not the really expensive Gaming X Trio version. You get a nice metal backplate along the rear and then a pretty decent rear IO. We've got a few display port connections and then also a HDMI, which I always like to see for compatibility reasons, plug it up to a TV uh, without any issues. But I mean, all in all, pretty impressive so far. That's enough jabbering on about the GPU though. Let's get it installed and see how good it looks in this system. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. So here we go, slide it in. Oh, it's a bit of a squeeze actually, guys. It will go in though. I'm pretty confident of that. Oh, only just. <laughs> That is like a glove. It slides into the top PCIe slot. In three, in two, in one. Boom, there we go. How good does that thing look though? There is definitely enough clearance here as well, guys, by the way. Once we've secured it in as well, it will move slightly higher up the case. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and then actually boot this system up for the first time live on camera to see if we've got the process right or whether I've screwed up. Here we go, in three, in two, in one. We're gonna hit the power, but oh, look at that thing. I'm actually that genuinely like, look at the front. 
Look at that. That looks awesome. It's so compact as well. We obviously need to put the rear side panel on, but I tend to wait until we've actually got the system to post before we go ahead and do that. But that looks awesome. There's only one way to truly find out, though, if this thing is indeed a pocket rocket, and that's actually to test out a load of games on this system. First, though, while we've got it all booted up, let's film some glam footage and put together an awesome montage of just how good it looks when it's all powered up. Roll that montage. Lovely jubbly, we finished off putting this system together and seeing just how good it looks when it's all powered up. But what about performance? How wow does the brand new AMD 6700 XT graphics card stack up? Let's find out, shall we? On your screen now, first of all, is a summary, a snapshot view of all of the different gaming benchmarks we tested. If you'd like to see the individual benchmark runs, the unedited ones for all of the titles today, check out the playlist in the card section now on our new YouTube channel called Benched. But for now, let's take a deeper dive into some of our focus titles to get a clearer idea of performance. First up is GTA 5, and we tested this in the in-game benchmarking mode. At 1440p high settings across the board, we got 119 FPS on average with 107 and 95 for the 90 and the 99th percentile results. This is a really easy number for you guys to compare at home against your own systems as it's super comparable and gives you a really repeatable result. We also tested out Call of Duty's Black Ops Cold War in a multiplayer zombies map and here at 1080p high settings we got 119 FPS on average with 107 and 99 for the 90 and 99th percentile results. But what about 1440p? Well, I'm glad to report that we still got some great frame rates. At 1440p high settings, we did drop down a little bit, but only to 114 FPS on average, about five frames per second in it. And personally, I think the game looked great. We also got some good Warzone numbers, as you saw earlier. So if you're a COD fanboy all around, this system has got you covered. Apex Legends is next up today then, and at 1440p high settings, the straight rasterization power of the 6700 XT comes to fruition. 163 FPS on average with 151 and 144 for the 90 and 99th percentile results. That's not a bad showing. We also tested out Valorant, probably the easiest game today, but still a really popular choice. At 1080p, which is the resolution most of you guys will play these competitive games at, we got a staggering, a whopping, a huge 422 frames per second. That's crazy. 422 FPS and the 90 and 99th percent our results weren't too bad either. Cyberpunk 2077 is next up then and at 1440p medium settings we did drop our frame rate down a little bit to 72, 63 and 56. Let's be honest Cyberpunk is no Valorant on this PC. That's still a very respectable number though using AMD's kind of DLSS scaling equivalent but of course no ray tracing to be considered here as the AMD card simply doesn't support it unfortunately in Cyberpunk 2077. That brings us on to the final title today, a little bit of Fortnite. We tested this at both 1440p high settings and 1080p competitive settings. So hang on in there. At 1440p high, we got 150 frames per second on average with 132 and 119 for the 90 and 99th percentile results, which is not a bad effort. And Fortnite, I think personally looks fantastic. 1080p competitive though is a whole new dimension with everything tuned down to low, the render distance set to far. And of course, no DLSS unfortunately to take advantage of. We got 211 FPS. FPS on average. That's ridiculous. With 90 and 99th percentile results in the region of 187 and 170 FPS, meaning this system basically always stayed above 170 frames in Fortnite. And on that note, that pretty much wraps it up, not only for the benchmark section today, but the whole video. I can hear you crying at home. Is it over already? But don't worry, get subscribed. We've got more exciting build content coming very, very soon. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to check out all the parts for latest pricing and availability in the description below. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.